Today I'm sharing my super productive way to plan my week using Notion and my paper planner. Do you ever feel like there just aren't enough hours in a day, like you're juggling work, family, personal goals, and somehow it always feels like something is falling through the cracks? Trust me, I get it. I know that feeling of overwhelm and that scatterbrain all too well. But what if I told you there's a way to streamline everything? A method that can help you take control of your time, reduce stress, and actually make progress towards your goals. Imagine starting your week with a clear plan and ending it feeling accomplished and in control. In today's video, I'm sharing how I use a seamless approach to integrating Notion and my paper planner to plan my week as easily and as quickly as possible while also 10xing my productivity. This workflow has been a game changer for me and I'm excited to show you how it can transform your productivity so you can intentionally get more done. So let's jump in. So if you're new around here, just know that I love a good metaphor and today I want to explain my workflow using a metaphor of a player getting ready for a game. And all the best players will tell you that the coach matters. So I use the getting things done tenets to conduct my weekly review and planning. So you don't have to just trust me, your neighborhood psychologist that spent over a decade helping other people create a sustainable hustle. You can rest assured knowing that this system is backed up by the tried and true methods of the book Getting Things Done by David Allen. If you want the exact step process that I'll be using, you can download my free Getting Things Done weekly review notion template that I have linked in the description. So first I want you to clear out your locker. I don't want you to be that player with the foul smelling messy locker. Do you know that feeling of trying to get work done amongst chaos? Even though you're sitting down to be productive, it's like the clutter in the environment makes you feel scattered and even on edge. A UK survey found that 21% of people believe a cluttered desk increases their workload actually, and 20% actually said that it negatively impacts how much they can get done. And we don't wanna bring that bad juju into our week by feeling angst or anxiety when we're planning. That's why the first step in my weekly workflow is to prepare, and this way I can plan from a space of clarity and from groundedness. So here's what I do to prepare. I clean off my desk because that's usually where I do my weekly planning. Tidy things up, I do this on Friday, so I have like the, the mess of the week and the little things that didn't get done throughout the week kind of physically around me on my desk. So I tidy up my desk. Then I actually also tidy up my workspace. I also do things like filing away notes. And as I go through my paper clutter, I will put you know that trash away as well. So that when I do get done with my weekly planning, I can walk out of my office and feel refreshed and ready for the next week. And then the next two steps that I do to prepare, I'm going to show you actually over at my desk on my computer because they involve my Notion second brain. This is a system I'm built on the book. I have the book here for you to see, Building a Second Brain by Tiago Forte. And you'll be able to see how I do that over there in my second brain system. And that's gonna move us into actually getting this week planned. And if you're interested in using the second brain system for yourself, I do have a second brain notion template done for you completely synced, ready to go, linked in the description below. Let's move over to my desk. Do you ever wonder why some weeks feel so much like a struggle and then other weeks might feel so effortless? The answer might look I in last week's choices and what we can call in our metaphor last week's game tape. So we're going to take a look in our next step at our weekly review of how we did in the last week because this is going to help us before we move into planning our week. So my getting things done weekly review checklist is in my routines but what we're going to do is start with that first step in that process is kind of looking at how we did last week and reflecting on last week so we can inform ourselves more accurately more productively as we move into this next week. So it starts with your 12 week year scorecard, which I will show you the guys the template here. This is the one that you can get if you choose to use the 12 week year template, which I have for you as well down below. We're going to go to the scorecard and you'll have all your lead actions here. And whether you're doing this in Notion or by hand, you just want to take a look at how did you do in the previous week, check off what you did and then write the percentile. So you want to be hitting 85% or more if you're using the 12 week year strategy. So you do that and then you can again reset it for the next week. Also in my planner, I basically look at my wins and my challenges from the previous week. I write that out by hand and I take a look at my monthly goals from my paper planner. So once I have a good idea of how I did with my lead goals, those once I have an idea of what went right, what went wrong for those goals, I can kind of calibrate my next week's goals. When I'm planning each segment, I only have to look back at the previous one one because I can trust that that previous segment, for instance, now I'm planning my week, I look back at my month, I don't have to look at the quarter and the year because I know my month 
right, is based on my quarter and my year following my system. It's really easy if you have the Mod Ambition Planner or if you use the strategies in the book, the 12-week year, because you use reverse goal setting. So I've tracked my 12-week year SMART goals. I've looked at my monthly goals. I've also looked at also my wins and my challenges from the previous week. So the next thing, let's just take a look. I just take a look at where I keep my meeting bits, which for me, I use iCal. Everything is color-coded, but these are the meetings that I have for the week. And then let me show you how I actually put those into my planner so you can see what I'm talking about. So let's jump to my paper planner. So basically you can see in the red, any meetings that I have for from my iCal for the week, I take time to put into my paper planner. This is a week that I have started planning. Then when I go to actually time block, which are, is on my daily planning pages here, I can have the meeting set in stone, which are in red. And then I just put my task, which we'll get to, around those meetings. So see how once you have everything on the day you wanna get it done, then you wanna make it even more realistic. You don't have to think about it by then, just time blocking it all out of how it's gonna fit in your day, making sure to add buffers and things like that in your paper planner. Okay, so now I have reviewed last week. I have looked at my monthly goals to make sure that I'm on track. I've put my meetings and events, those things that are set in stone into my paper planner. And then I take some time to glance over my someday maybe projects. In the projects section, you have the opportunity to mark some of your projects someday maybe, having to hold it in your mind or writing it in a piece of paper that you'll never look at again. You can keep those ideas that you have for yourself in the future top of mind and in a place that you can actualize them if you want to, which is one of the really great things about this system. It takes that clutter off of your mind and makes it actionable if you decide for it to be. Then I'm going to review the projects that I have and add any needed tasks. So we've reviewed our projects that we have going on. We've made sure that we have changed any status of the task within those projects and we've added any tasks for in those projects that we may need to, which doesn't always occur. You, you may already have have all the tasks in there that apply to that project. Now it's actually time to come up with a game plan, coming up with the plays in our metaphor, and we are going to plan the actual week now that we looked at the game tape. So it starts with processing our task, and in the template, if you open this, you'll have a complete checklist of what I mean by processing tasks. So you're going to clarify your inbox items, both digital, like your email inboxes, but also your physical inbox, like if you have a mail inbox in your home or a file inbox of things that you wait to file away at the end of the week. You're going to do that now. And then you're going to move into processing your to-do list, which if you're using the second brain, that will be your task list. Whatever system you're using, let's just say you have like a running by hand to-do list, you're going to process those things as well. I'm going to show you guys in the template. This is the task page of the second brain. And here are going to be all the inbox items, items that you just quickly added through the week that you want to get done, ideas, anything that you've just kind of thought of on the fly, up to do's, you're going to, they're going to land here for in, in your inbox because they haven't been processed yet. So let's add a new one. You're going to take these and First of all, you're gonna think about when do you wanna get this done by and add a due date. So let's say I wanna get done by 31st. And since it's not in the due next, which is meaning do it in the next week that you're about to move into, you would move it into scheduled. So it has the due date for you here and you have it scheduled to, to do out later. So whenever you look at this active task, you're gonna look at the things that are have a due date for this week that you're moving into. You're gonna add those to your paper planner, your weekly planner, and then anything you have marked as due next from the inbox, it's going to be planned also in your weekly plan in your paper planner as well, which I'll hopefully put up some B-roll to show you guys how I do that. And then if it's still in progress, it has a due date, meaning like you're actively working on it, even though it's not scheduled for later, you might want to schedule that task during your week as well. And if it has a schedule here, that means that you haven't decided when you want to get it done. So you're going to add a due date to it, and then you're going to mark it as scheduled. Now you might also add some of your own personal statuses, like waiting for if it's a task that you need somebody to get back to you before you can complete it, things like that, feel free to welcome it. This one is associated with a project, so that task is also going to populate in that project window as well, as well as your, you'll see all the tasks here. The same thing for the area. If you add it to an area, it will show up here, but it'll also sync to that life area page. And then you have the option, if you check these off here, it will archive it. And then you're going to organize remaining items. You're going to tag them as hold, waiting for, or to schedule. And then the last thing you're going to do is schedule recurring tasks from life areas or trigger list. So 
this is basically a trigger list is something that the book talks about or just kind of those ongoing things which are kind of coincidentally linked to Tiago Forte's para method of life areas those ongoing things that are part of your life that don't really have a deadline like a good example is social media creation it doesn't really have a deadline but you have ongoing tasks for that so that when you go into that area when you go into your areas you can go into each one of these little life areas and get triggers get reminders of any ta ongoing tasks that you need to do like uh, scheduling doctor's appointments or uh, maybe you need to script a new youtube video those kinds of things you'll be triggered or you'll remember by looking at your different life areas and then that is it that is your weekly review and plan for the week super simple it's meant to be simple and taking only about 20 minutes i will see you back in prior time we'll use our time machine to go back and i'll see you over there so once you get it down it usually takes only about 20 minutes and like i said download that free note template that I have for you with the checklist and you can reset it and use it each week. I also have a PDF version of it if you are not a Notion girly and you just want the checklist itself. But this planning routine is just one piece of my entire life organization system as you probably saw that allows me to intentionally get things done. I shared my entire system of thing, all the systems I use in my life to stay organized in this video for you to watch next. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Cheers to planning, manifesting, and enjoying your dream life. Namaste. Thank you.